I'm Christine Ballard. And I'm Melanie Karasmoniotis. And welcome to Art and Up, the place where creatives connect, cultivate and support each other's creative journey. Today, we are going all the way to the UK and we are talking to the lovely Maxwell Tills. Now, he is Sydney based. You grew up in Sydney, but we're all over, all the way over to the UK where he's been living for a while now. We would describe Maxwell as an artist illustrator and uh, very eager to get to know him a little better. And we're going to start straight off with were you always creative? Yeah, um, well, you know, firstly, thank you so much for having me, guys. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, yeah, I've, I've always loved to draw, uh, ever since I was, like, a tiny, tiny, tiny child. Um, I, I always had, like, the Tintin and Asterix comic books as when I was a kid. Uh, so it was always, like, old Franco-Belgian styles of art that really kind of got me interested as a boy and got me into, like, drawing. So I would just sit and kind of redraw them or make my own little comics my friends in primary school it's always something that I've had in me and yeah something that I think I always will. So Max when did you know that you wanted to be an artist along that journey of school and drawing when was it like oh I really want to be an artist I don't want to do anything. Well else. yeah I mean it's it's an interesting one I never thought that you could really be an artist um you know you've got that image of like old French painters in the 1800s like you know do they really still exist um, and I, I guess, you know, when you're, when you're in school, you get that like confirmation from your peers. Like if, if you become quite good at something, you become known for being good at that thing. Like if you're really good at football, oh, you know, Johnny's really good at kicking the ball. And for me, that was drawing. So I became like the drawing arty kid. So it was almost like that was the slot that I fitted into back in primary school. But it wasn't until like after high school and then doing a year at, of, at uni in Sydney, um, that I thought, oh, hang on, this is actually something that I'm really passionate about more than anything else. So I, I, I finished uh, high school and I did art. And that was like the first time I properly did art, you know, it taught, took it seriously. Uh, and, you know, I did quite well at HSC. Uh, and that was, you know, like really like a confirmation, you know, that, oh, shit, I, I, I'm sorry, I could actually do this, you know. And, um, and but then it wasn't until I was at university and I was, I was doing like global studies, international studies that you so know, it wasn't I was kind of an really art cool. course, Max? It wasn't an art course that you were doing? No, I've, I've never studied art outside of like a, a couple of lessons in, in year 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I remember like sitting around and, you know, doing some like law classes and, and at, at UTS and I'm, some of the people there were just so into it and that was their whole thing and they were clearly like, you know, destined and so driven. And, and that wasn't me. Uh, I, I remember one like lecturer was walking around and you know looking at whatever we were doing and I was just drawing all the time and they were like look you know there's enough lawyers and stuff just go and do art instead so I thought yeah may, you know may as well that, that was like the big all right yeah and so I dropped out of uni after only one year went traveling and that's when I kind of really decided to take it seriously yeah kind of, I went into it quite naively I didn't know any artists I didn't have any professional background or any idea of how to do that I had some friends studying it you know various art colleges across Australia and that gave them that kind of solid background you know you can actually talk to people and figure out how people do it but I kind of went in it went into it completely blindly so it's kind of miraculous and I'm still here yes and it's so my what, job. With that, <laughs> at what point did it become a reality this is going to be sustainable as a career yeah. um that, that's a good question I think realistically it was probably like the last two years so I sort of, I'd said I wanted to be an artist around like 2015. That was when I moved to the UK. Um, you know, I moved here, I was dating a, a girl and it all just kind of made sense. I wanted an adventure, but I kind of needed to give my, my family a better, better excuse than I'm just moving for a girl. So I said, I'm going to, you know, try and move to become an artist. Um, <laughs> but and amazingly, that kind of worked out. So, you know, you're working in bars and restaurants you know, you're not making any money from your art, but very slowly, you know, you'll sell a drawing, you'll sell a painting. And then over the years you go, oh, I've just kind of paid my whole month's rent, but you're still not, it's not sustainable. It's not, um, you know, uh, uh, you, there's not a solid flow of income, but over the last two years, that's just completely taken over. And, and I've not had to work in any other job at all. This has just been my, my full-time employment now. Yeah, so yeah, over the last two years, but slowly over five years. If that makes sense. 
So Max, where do you make your art? Um, where, well, where, where do I physically make my art? Or yeah, where like... do you do it? I, I, I believe you do a lot of sketching on site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that, that, this, the stuff on site is just kind of more fun personal stuff. That's the stuff I enjoy the most. It's my background, you know, going out in the street, sitting down somewhere in a cafe and just sketching what you see. So I suppose I would regard myself as like an urban sketcher. There's a lot of those online, a lot of those on Instagram, which is a really nice budding community. And that's where I kind of fell into. Uh, so it was when I was traveling, you just go to a new city in a new country, you just sit down and just start sketching your surroundings. And it became the, the best way to like, uh, really figure out what a place is like and get involved with your surroundings. Nowadays, when I'm doing proper work, artworks I'm trying to sell or that have been commissioned, I'll just sketch my, my, my home space. So I, I don't paint, so I, I work with pens and paper. So unlike working with oils, I don't need like a lot of space and it's not particularly dirty. Um, you know, it's not, not messy, I should say. Um, so I can ha happily just sit in my living room you know, my house, a friend's house, an Airbnb, anywhere, it doesn't matter, just as long as I have a desk. And that's really where I work. What about the, the whole planning side of things? Like, mm -hmm. is there, I know commissions, there's a lot of planning involved, but when you talk about urban sketching, could you just be maybe not planning to go sketching one day and be, you know, just inspired by the surroundings at that time? Mm -hmm. And if so, what are the reactions of the people around you? Oh, well, again that's the joy of like street sketching is you just best to go out there with no idea in mind maybe you know if you're in London you go oh, I really want to sketch Trafalgar Square you go okay you've kind of got some images and idea of where you want to sit in the viewpoint but my favorite way is just to wander around see like oh that old pub looks really pretty or this park or that pagoda and just something catches your eye and inspires you at the moment and you can just sit down and just improvise really uh, and it's really fun because people always come up to you of any age group in any country, children, old men and women, and they always kind of want to see what you're doing. So it's a, quite a fun way to meet local people as well and just interact with 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 the environment. Yeah. So Max, but, you know, I, I find it's best not to plan, in my, in my opinion. <laughs> the materials that you use, um, you mentioned they're pen and paper, and I know that you do a lot of reproductions as well. Mm -hmm. But um, being on the side sketcher in, in it's a good excuse to travel, right? Um, do you have a separate kit or a different little kit that you might use when you're doing on site as opposed to the materials that you use in your art studio? Maybe you can talk us through the differences that you might use. Well, uh, I find if you're doing like a quick little sketch, particularly if you're sketching in a sketchbook, uh, I don't bring my colored pens. So I work a lot with pro markers. Um, you know, Copic pens, uh, even Posca pens, usually alcohol-based markers. Um, and they're quite portable. And as I said before, they're really like not messy. So they don't leak or bleed. They don't tend to spill. So they're perfect for traveling and working on the go. Naturally, if you're gonna sketch the street, you can't bring a hundred pens with you. So maybe I'll just have the colors in mind because I've worked with them for so long that I really know which colors I kind of want to use. So I'll take maybe five to six pens, take some of the small like fine liner pens and you can just carry them around in a satchel with your sketchbook or some paper. Uh, and it's the same materials I use when I'm working from home in my studio. Uh, it's just, I have a much more refined, smaller color scheme that I'm gonna work with. Uh, obviously, you know, bring a ruler and a pencil and eraser and all that business. But um, yeah, I think when you're going out and sketching on the street, you just have to have a little bit more of an idea of what colors you wanna take because you just can't take them all obviously. I guess that's why I want to get into watercolor painting because it seems quite compact. You can bring those palettes and, and brushes with you and it seems quite quite perfect for on the go. Pen and wash is quite popular, yes. Yeah. So you slip in your watercolor and then your waterproof pens go over the top. And it's it, like you said, it's very portable. Do you have a particular paper? Because I know that the sketches, they're all about mm -hmm. the texture and the surface of the paper, you know, and especially the poor porousness well that's not even a word you know the the, the way some right. people like it to soak in some yeah, people like to sit on the top so uh do you have a little secret paper that yeah. you can tell us about well the paper so i remember i remember i was using stonehenge paper in in australia i don't know i've never found it again over here in the uk so i predominantly work with archer's aquarel hot press mm -hmm. and it's a good 300 gsm stock really nice thick smooth paper uh, i don't tend to work with the cold press stuff because 
I find obviously watercolors, the cold press is perfect, but I like the really smooth texture of a hot press. Um, sketchbooks, again, that they the paper doesn't tend to be quite thick with those. You normally get like 250 to 150 GSM, uh, and often the colored pro marker pens can bleed through. So, so what I'll do is I'll buy huge like A1 sheets of the Archer's Aquarel and then cut it up to the size that I want, normally A4. And that absorbs the colors really nicely and doesn't blend and doesn't bleed through to the other side. So then I can just go around with like a piece of cardboard or something hard, like a hardback book and just put the paper on top of that and use that as my, uh, my easel, so to speak. Um, but yeah, the, the, the paper, particularly with the materials I use is quite important. So I, I just always go for a high GSM, nice, smooth, smooth uh, texture. What about the focus of your art, subject matter? Like, is there a favorite thing that you're, or is there something you're focusing on at the moment? Yeah, well, well I, I always uh, was intrigued by architecture. So the, one of the biggest questions I get a lot on my Instagram is, are you an architect? Are you studying architecture? And a lot of my followers are architects, if not artists themselves. Uh, I've just always loved architecture. I suppose if I never got into art, I'd probably fall into that world. Um, it just intrigues me. And when I, the thing I loved when I started drawing, uh, when I was a little kid, it was like capturing places. It was building like a little world, a little scene. So landscapes, you know, drawing something that's quite real, like creating a, yeah, a little world on the paper. So I've never really dabbled with abstract or, or even you know, impressionism, I just try to capture things as, as, as accurately as I can, but from a kind of comic-y, mm. from a comic-y background, if that makes sense. So yeah, again, like streetscapes or sitting in a cafe and drawing the people around you, I like to capture a place as if it's a memory. So given that, how do you schedule your time? I know when you're on site, you're a bit mm -hmm. limited sometimes by, you know, a truck might park in front of your scene. <laughs> but yeah. uh, have a, a strict schedule, perhaps in the studio, you know, you said you're professional now. So is it a nine to five that you, you sort of uh, have at home or? I, I wish. I think it's a, this is my full time job now and it's how I make my money. But I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm the most professional of sorts. That's probably where I need to improve the most. Um, there's no set time and that's the joy of it. You know, I work from home and I'm entirely freelanced and I'd say 80% of the jobs that I get don't have deadlines. So, you know, it's just draw when you want to draw. Sometimes there'll be a day where I'm just like, I'm just not feeling it. I just want to do anything else. Or sometimes I can draw from nine in the morning till, th you know, two in the morning uh, and just, just spend an entire almost 24 hours on it. When drawing in the street, you have to be a little more conscious because the sunlight is really important. Um, if you're not coloring in or doing much shading, the sunlight doesn't matter too much, but I like to take photos of the drawings and cut them out. And maybe I'll send you some pictures of that later on. Um, but wherever the sun is, it's very important to that kind of style. So Do you, you have, have to be a very... particular time of day that you like to sketch, read your shadows and the sun? Not particular, it all, it all depends on the subject matter. So if you're drawing a particular cathedral or some old building, uh, if, okay, you go, okay, at, at 5 p.m., it's the sun hits at that perfect light. Then Europe, the, the light changes all the time. So 5 p.m. in March is completely different to 5 p.m. in December. So, you know, it, it's all just depends on the day where you are. So obviously you go into it a day before and you go, oh, okay, that's where it's gonna be. So you take mental notes. That's also one thing I do when I walk around. I'll go, oh, wow, look at that, like, beautiful view. I don't have my pens and paper with me, but I'll make a note. Okay, it's 2.30 in the afternoon. If I come back here tomorrow, the lighting will be absolutely perfect. And I'll just sit down and, and spend an hour or two and try and capture that. So what happens, because us artists sometimes don't like to admit that we do have slumps, but have you have ever, ever had a time where it's been... It's not just a matter of not you know, waking up and not feeling it. It's actually been an extended time or a time where you just felt that it was a flat period. And if so, what did you do? Or what would you suggest for others to do if they hit that spot? It's tough, isn't it? But it is true. We all, we all get that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and when you know, like, oh, art is my thing. This is what I do. And nothing's coming out right. You feel pretty worthless. You go, God, if this, yeah, this is the only thing I'm supposed to be really good at and nothing is, is coming out the way I want it to. You always just have to take a break. Like it comes back, you'll get a new idea and reapproach something from a different angle. 
it's tricky when it is your your only income and you know maybe you're living you know kind of day by day financially at times so it's like well you have to draw something otherwise you know you're going to be in a pretty precarious situation uh but yeah I, I just take a step back do something else and just not think about art for a little while because you know it obviously will come back as you said it happens to all of us um it happens to me all the time i just have to yeah relax take a breath and then reapproach it at, at, a, at a later date so max you and social media, you're quite prolific. Um, we've checked you all out. How do you handle it? How do you use social media for your business as an artist? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, and going back to what I said at the start of the interview, going into the whole art world, um, when I had left university, I didn't know anything about it. Um, I started applying to like a few art agencies, rarely even got an email back. Um, uh, it was through social media um that's where i found my kind of foot into the industry and that's how i've turned it into a career um i mean in instagram is fantastic at first i was reluctant to get one but my girlfriend at the time was like no no no, you got to get an instagram like, okay. and that's just proven to be like really really helpful not as a tool only to like meet other artists and collaborate but just it's like a free online gallery um and so that's how i i sell my artwork basically I'm not part of any other galleries. Uh, it, I just simply post what I what I have for sale or put it all up on Instagram. And then people from all over the world, predominantly the States and Canada, uh, will just be like, yep, yeah, I'd love it. Send over some money on PayPal and I'll just post it away. And that's uh, that's the week's that's the week's income. Yeah, so it, it's really important. Yeah, I, a tool for artists, Instagram. Again, not, not even if you want to sell, but just if you want to like pick up and, and trade tricks with other with other creators like it's uh, I, I can't stress enough how important it is and you know it's, I've been on there for like five or six years so you know it, it's it's been a very slow gradual build do you have a now, plan for it like when you do your Instagram do you plan, just post yeah. as you go or do you organize what you're going to post or no no I just I try to I try to post like once every two days but then that's not realistic because then I also don't want to post stuff that I'm not proud of uh, that I don't think is is presentable um you know going back to the previous question it's like we have times where just nothing comes out right mm -hmm. so in those times I just won't post anything you got to try and like keep people engaged and post little stories and questionnaires and things like that um and you know I, I could go into more detail about the whole Instagram side of stuff but it gets a bit you know technical and boring but um yeah i mean you don't need to plan too heavily just try and post semi-regularly um because that way it just keeps keeps the eyes there and just keeps people engaged but uh what's your yeah, yeah. sounds like instagram is a, a positive tool <clears throat> and it is a great tool for collaboration no doubt and uh, and for sales and whatnot but what's the most challenging thing about being an artist illustrator uh, well, definitely there's the, the lack of, for me, the lack of financial stability. Um, it's all good now, but for, for, for many years, it was, it was a real struggle. Um, especially living in London, like I, I should have lived somewhere much, you know, more affordable. Um, it's that, it's that having no, like, you know, even if you can, you can make, you know, a, a, a bit of money or whatever, but then to have like no real, like, paycheck and no real promise of like there's there's no other job after this you just come job by job and you just have to hope someone commissions something or something sells because sometimes you'll, you'll make all these drawings and you're really proud of them you put them out there and you'll be like oh okay so i'll sell that for this i'll sell it for that and that should be next month's rent i'll be good and then nothing sells and you just sat there being like oh shit what happened what did i do wrong that that to me is the hardest part especially when your your best friends and peers have got like proper jobs and they're you know primary school teachers and lawyers and you know they they do real real things you know um to me that's the hardest part um the, the creative side it's always just come naturally you know i, I don't get this is why I, I i love doing what i do it doesn't frustrate me um it's just you know if we could live in a world where where you didn't need money then that'd be great but we don't so. So that sounds like Max, you just explained to us what the best bit about being an artist was. You just get to do it, right? What's you just get to do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, there's something amazing about doing what you love, and everyone loves something, hopefully. And if they can get to work in that industry that they're so passionate about, then that's incredible. 
Um, but for me as an artist, it's the freedom and it's the ability to move around. Um, as I said a bit earlier, like hopefully on Saturday or Sunday, I'm going to go to Bosnia and don't know what's there. I'm just going to go live there for a few months and try and travel around a bit. And I can do that because if I've got a postal service, just any old postal service, I can pack up the drawings and post them away and make an income. Mm. Yeah, it's, it, it, it just feels like I've got complete freedom in my life. Which yeah. is wonderful. Which answers the question, really. The freedom, the best part mm. about being an artist illustrator. And it does sound really exciting. Bosnia sounds great. And so we'll look forward to seeing all of this fresh new work based on the new adventure. Oh, cool. Well, we'll see if I get there. You know, I have to get all my, my COVID tests. So who knows? I might, I might just be stuck here. Yes, it's the world we live in right now. But it sounds really hopeful and exciting. And if you don't make it to Bosnia, we'll, sure, we'll be sure to see you somewhere else illustrating the surroundings and... Um, dazzling us with your amazing skill because it, it oh. really is skill, skillful your work oh thank you i mean yeah it, it's just great it's great talking to you guys it's really great to kind of converse with other artists that's what that's one thing actually i kind of i kind of regret about not going to any art schools um it's just like you don't you never like it would have been great to like kind of develop as an artist with with peers like, that's quite cool i've got some friends who went to art classes and they they kind of they kind of know all the people in the scene and stuff. And it's really, really lovely in that regard. So that's why I've kind of turned to Instagrams where I can meet my, my artist buddies. Yeah, when yeah, you so sometimes, it can be, sometimes it can be quite like, not lonely, but just because I do like people. I like working with people. I really love working in bars and restaurants. I just love interacting. Uh, and sometimes you'd be like, oh, okay, another day I've just sat here drawing, you know, listening to music and watching some video on YouTube. You know, it, I, I, the, the interaction with people, I think, is, is one element which is maybe lacking. In, well, Max, in I think that's why we started this, because every, we all feel the same way. We did have this illusion that if you went to art school, that everyone would be artists and we all be great and fun together. And we worked out that that's not yeah. it, <laughs> you know. So that's why hopefully things like this can connect people to get to know you. And we can understand that we all talk the same language, but it's a language that everyone says sort of differently, I think. And, mm -hmm. and you know, art's a great language. It's an international language, isn't it? So I think that people can find joy and happiness through your travels. Even if in Australia, we can't travel anywhere. We can travel in your pictures because you show us the world in a, a beautiful way, uh, a linear and it's bright and fresh. And so everyone should go and check out Max's, we'll put the details up, mm -hmm. um, check out all his connections. As he said, you can only see him on Instagram, but that's how we connect. It's very easy and the postal service still works. So we all are uh, going to check you out and we, we better let you get on and uh, pack your bags then maybe. Oh, I, I probably should start thinking about that. <laughs> I do. Well, ne when you next travel to Sydney, we'll all um, have to get the answer. Yeah, together. I'd love that. I, I miss I miss Sydney so much. It'd be good to go back home. Yeah, mm. we'll look forward to it. So take care and um, we'll catch you when you're in town. Fantastic. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you guys. Thank you, Matt. It's our pleasure. Thank you.